All these new cameras are offering 10-bit internal recording, but what does it actually mean? Let's look at how increasing the bit depth will improve quality by increasing dynamic range and coloring in your videos. Hey everyone, Camber here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, consider subscribing and also joining my private Facebook group where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. But what is bit depth? The simple answer is that an increase in bit depth will increase the possible colors that your camera can capture, giving you smoother color changes and less color banding. However, you'll also have larger files requiring more storage space and a more powerful computer to handle the data. But now, let's look a little closer at how bit depth works, and to start, answer the question, what's a bit? All camera sensors take what we see and convert that image into a digital file. And these digital files are made up of bits that can be either a 1 or a 0. A 16 by 9 4K image is made up of nearly 8.3 million pixels, and the colors for each of those pixels is created by mixing various amounts of red, green, and blue. Well, the bit depth refers to the number of bits and ones and zeros used to record the color channels for each of those pixels. So if we only had one bit of information, all you'd be able to see is black or white because you only have the option of a zero or one. But each time you add another bit, you get double the options of shades between black and white. So with two bits, you'd then have zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. With three bits, you'd then double those shades again. So by the time we get to eight bits, which is the standard on most cameras, you have 256 options from combinations between eight zeros to eight ones. And once you make the jump from eight bit to 10 bit, then you have 1,024 different shades, which gives a much smoother change between various shades. All right, so far we've only been looking at black and white, but a pixel is sampling all three colors. And a color image is composed of a mixture of red, green, and blue to create all the colors you see in the image. So with an increase in the bit depth, you're also increasing the number of colors that can be represented. For example, in an 8-bit image, each color has 256 shades, and that combination provides you with nearly 16.8 million possible colors. And when you move up to 10-bit, you now have 1,024 possible shade values per channel, which provides you with a total of over 1 billion possible colors in your image. Image. And increasing the bit depth will obviously increase file size, but consider that a 10-bit video gives you four times as many colors per channel than an 8-bit video while only increasing file size by 20%. So obviously having more color options is better for image quality, but if our eyes can only see around 10 million colors, then why do we need to go beyond the 8-bit video with its 16.7 million color options? Well, those 10 million colors that our eyes pick up may not be the same 10 million picked up by the 8-bit video, and our eyes can see subtle shades and colors that an 8-bit video just can't reproduce. And this is why we often see banding, which is obvious jumps from one color or tone to the next instead of a smooth gradient like what you'd see in a blue sky. Or like here in Gerald Undone's background where the color goes from bright purple to a darker purple towards the edges. So 10-bit video gives you more color options to avoid this, but it also gives you much more scope when it comes to color grading than 8-bit video before your image quality begins to degrade. And you'll also have more latitude when correcting highlights and overexposed shots or shadows in those under exposed areas. Because when you make these adjustments, you're expanding the tonal range of parts of the image, which can start to make small gaps between values turn into large gaps. So even though the differences may not be visible initially, they'll become obvious quickly and can be a serious issue in editing by causing your image to break down quickly. And then when you compress and export your video, it's going to lose even more data. But starting off with a 10-bit file means that the image won't degrade as quickly during editing, and the compression algorithms have much more information to work with when you're exporting your video. Okay, so 10-bit video is obviously better than 8-bit, but does that mean you should never use 8-bit video anymore if your camera can produce 10-bit video? Well, keep in mind that early digital films like the Star Wars prequels were shot in 8-bit 1080p format, and we've been using 8-bit video for years in our DSLRs, and most people probably wouldn't even notice the difference. As long as you have reasonable expectations about grading your footage and posts, then 8-bit video should be fine. So if you're just going to be posting your videos to YouTube or Facebook, you really don't need to go higher than 8-bit. But if you do plan on doing a lot of heavy editing in your film, then 10-bit video does capture a lot more the full color spectrum 
and gives you much more room for color correction and grading. 10-bit recording is also a mandatory minimum format in many production companies like Netflix. So if you aspire to enter your video into film festivals or have it accepted by Netflix or other companies, then you'll probably want to go with the 10-bit. And even though a higher bit depth will increase your available colors, the quality of your recorded image depends on many other factors like recording data rates and color sampling such as 420 versus 422, which I'll cover in another video. But if you have a newer camera like the Canon R5, the Sony a7S III, or the Panasonic GH5, then congrats because you now have the option to record 10-bit video internally, though maybe not for very long on some of the cameras. But even if your camera only shoots 8-bit internal, you may still have the option to get 10-bit video through an HDMI cable to an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5. Many cameras like the EOS R have this option, so check your manual and see what's available on your camera. And finally, keep in mind that the bit depth that you record in doesn't define your production value. You can make a well-lit, well-shot scene look great on an iPhone if you know what you're doing, but if you know what you're doing, you're probably gonna be using good equipment, but that's more so to say that recording in the highest bit depth and resolution won't automatically make your footage look good. You really need to practice those skills in lighting and framing to make your footage really look great. But as always, if this video was helpful, then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.